I'm delighted to introduce our speakers for this session, Holly and Baikangli, with a profound wealth of experiences in both development and security domains. Holly is a security specialist who has six years of experience on application security, web security, and binary security. Our speaker started on his professional journey as a developer specializing in C++ and programming. This initial experience not only provided him with invaluable knowledge of the complex uh, mechanism within the software, but also helped, me, helped him to deep fascination in the art of uh, reverse engineering. Bai Kangli is another speaker with Holly, plays an application security specialist role in ThoughtWorks with three years of experience in application security, threat, threat modeling, dependency management, incident response, and security code review. In addition to his application security powers, our speaker has five years of development experiences in languages such as Python, Java, and Golan. Dedicated focus on application security coupled with extensive development background makes them a backbone in the realm of security. So without further ado, let us welcome his, this ex exceptional expert with whose insights or in, uh, enlighten us in, on the happy reverse engineering with Freda. Over to Baikangli and Holly. Hello, everyone. This is Holly. Wait a second. Okay. Um, First question, um, is everyone able to see my screen now? Yes, sir. Okay, let's get started. Okay, um, I'm not sure if you folks um, have heard of Freda before. Uh, it's not a famous female artist, it's another compute computer science tools or computer engineering tools. So if you, uh, you are interested in this, allow me to give you a, I think, very interesting topic today. First, uh, let me introduce myself. Yeah, my name is Hao Li and I'm from China. And also I joined Source for maybe more than six years and I'm now a lead consultant. My interest include, includes, um, as a security specialist, my interest include um, AppSec, threat modeling, as well as web security and binary security. That's why I am so interested in FREDA. Also as a dev, I have the background for C++, Java, Kotlin, and Ruby. And also I'm very interested in system programming. So yeah, my hobby is try to uh, combine the security and uh, some kind of system programming. So if you are also interested in this area, yeah, free, feel free to contact me. Okay, the next speaker. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Bai Kang I'm also working in SolarWorks. I've been there for five years. I played application security specialist role for three years. And uh, in play this role, I'm most focusing on application security and the threat modeling, web security, and the DevSecOps, and the, some security code review. Uh, before that, I have played four years as a developer, uh, focus on the, a lot of uh, uh, different domain like data or finance and uh, uh, people information, uh, et cetera. So that's me. Uh, I have uh, I'm interesting with the uh, open source uh, projects and uh, some web web application security domains. Yes. I hand over to Holly. Okay. Thank you, Becca. Okay. So yeah, let's get started. So what is Freda? So I assume most of you. Uh, even you have heard of this, but I still assume most of you have not used it. So 
Um, I just caught this from the Freda's official website. What is Freda? It's a grease monkey for native apps or put in more technical terms. It's a dynamic code instrumentation toolkit. So I highlighted three keywords here. So first, it's Grease Monkey. In case you don't know the Grease Monkey, it's a JavaScript framework or engine which can help you to inject your own JavaScript code into some website, but it's uh, which makes under your control. So you, you can customize the, uh, the behavior of a website or the, the, the look of a website. So it's very flexible. See, uh, if you know what Grease Monkey is, that's cool. And Freda is just a Grease Monkey for native apps. By native apps, I mean those apps written in C or C++ or Object-C or some other system programming language. And also, native apps contains those uh, running in Android, in iOS, and many mobile apps nowadays. And by toolkit, I mean it's a, it has a rich set of all kinds of infrastructure to help you do uh, something like reverse engineering and dynamic code instrumentation. Okay, yeah, let give you more details. What makes Freda so powerful? First, it has a JavaScript API. Maybe JavaScript is the most uh, used a uh, script language nowadays. It's not just for browser. It seems everything is supposed to be written or rewritten in JavaScript nowadays. So it, it has the most audience range nowadays. And uh, it seems no one has never touched JavaScript before. So JavaScript make Freda very, very flexible. And also, Freda supports multiple platforms, which make it um, very useful. So you use the same JavaScript API and apply it to multiple platforms. And I will go to details later for this part. For the third one, it has a very good design. It applies something we call module design. As you can see, we have some infrastructure, but infrastructure is not uh, strange to you, I think, but it's the infrastructure for reverse engineering, for dynamic instrumentation. I think that's not new. Also, it contains many up layer stuff, which contains some command line tools, command some injection framework, contains some servers. So, it provides a rich set for this kind of stuff, which makes Freda a very powerful toolkit or framework. Also, I want to, I would like to highlight some highlights for Freda. First, as you can see, it's a toolkit. So based on this toolkit, we can have so many command line tools. We can have APIs, which is Java API, but also it contains multiple language bindings. So we can use Freda in Python, in C Sharp, in Java, and in all kinds of um, language, you name it. The second one is scriptable. So which means you can run JavaScript, as I mentioned a couple of times, in the target process, which is amazing that I never knew a tool or a similar things can help me to run JavaScript code in the target. We also write or wrote some C or C++ code to inject code into the native apps. But for JavaScript, it's the first time, I think. Also, it supports so many platforms and I, I list them here. Yeah, Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, and also it includes QNX. Yeah, so it's supposed to run in some car nowadays. Also, it supports many languages. By language, I mean the native language supported by the native platform. For example, 
if we want to develop some Android app, we must use Java or Kotlin nowadays. And also we may use Swift or Object-C in iOS. So we call Java or Object-C as the native language for that platform. Last but not least, Freda is an open source project. And according to the, the author, it will never be a private one. So definitely we can learn and we can benefit from this open source gene. The, the last one. The author also create a, a sharing feature that help you or, or encourage you to share your Freda code snapped online. So to some extent, you can just import some script written by others into your framework, into your tool set, and you can just benefit from other ones wise. Okay, so how Freda works? As you may guess, it still follows the debugger and debugging architecture. By debugging, I mean the target you are interested in and you want to run your Freda script in. So how it works? First, you must have a bootstrap way. We call it bootstrap thread to be run in the target. For this part, um, you should use all kinds of traditional way to achieve this. For example, you can inject um, code, use a remote thread into the target. You may use other um, mechanism provided by operating system, like LD preload stuff to load a shared object into the target process. So I will not list all the methods here, but Freda provides us a rich set of this kind of facility. We can just reuse it to inject, to bootstrap the stuff. So after the bootstrap set is launched, it will try to inject agent dot share point, a shared object. But for, for, for some platform like Windows, it may be a Freda agent dot DLL. So yeah, it's similar. For this one, it's a key component. It will contain a JavaScript engine in this object. And then we can build a channel, we call it communication channel, and with between the debugger and debugging. Then after this, as a debugger, we can send out our script, our JavaScript script to the debugging. And with the help from the agent, we can run our JavaScript in the target process. So it's, it's a whole process, but it's a brief one. And also, if you have any question, please leave that in Q&A section. We'll get back to that later. So um, with the JavaScript engine and the JavaScript API provided by Freda, we can run our uh, script, JavaScript in target process. I think it's, it's, it's ama amazing stuff. And also um, for the injection part or for some other part, I, I, I don't think it's something new, but to combine all this together, I, I must uh, acknowledge this is uh, an engineering achievement. Okay, talk is cheap. Uh, I think you, most of you want to see some, some real code. Okay. Here, I will show you a quick demo to give you a basic taste. Let me know if you can see the video. Okay. Okay, this is the first demo. I want to show you. And the purpose for this demo is try to give you a basic taste of how Freda works and also what can be done in using Freda. As you can see on the right side, there is a program written in C. But don't worry, it's a very simple one. As you can see, it's a function called hello, and it will try to print a string 
as well as a counter called count. And in the main logic, we'll try to keep calling hello. But between two calls, we'll try to sleep for one second. So yeah, you can guess it's an endless loop. Let me give it a try. Compile it first and then run this program. OK. Yeah, you may guess the, have already guessed the result. But please pay attention to the first line. I also print, print the address of hello here. We'll use this value later. So yeah, how about Freda? If we want to use Freda to interact with the target here, hello, we need to run something called Freda script. What does this Freda script looks like? Actually, it looks like this. It's just a standard JavaScript, especially it's ES6. And you can see here we, we have an object called Interceptor. It's an object provided by Freda, by Freda JavaScript binding. And we'll try to attach to some address. And every time this address or function is called, our event on enter will be triggered as well. So during the event handler, we can do something we like. Here we just print the second parameter, which is the counter, as you know. So yeah, let me give it a try. First, we need to find address for the target and input it into the parameter here. Then we'll try to use the command line like this, using the hello as the process name for the first parameter and using agent.js as the rest parameters. After we launch it, we can see every time the hello, the print is called, we'll have uh, one more line printed here. Actually, it's the logs we try to to create here. Now you may wonder, what, I, what else can we do for this? Yeah, actually, we can do many things. For example, I can just modify this on the fly. And as you can see, the console it takes effects immediately with our new string. And also you may wonder, since we can monitor the function calls, can we modify it? Definitely. Yeah, I'll give you a quick demo. You can have a taste here. For example, I want to add 1000 to every numbers. I save it. Pay attention to this part. Yeah, we have every number added with 1000. And we, we definitely can do more for this, but you have a basic understanding or feeling for Freda. And also, if I try to exit from the Freda engine, everything will revert it to the original state. And yeah, what I want to tell you is, it's very convenient to do all kinds of experiment with the native apps, just like some front end apps or back end apps you are used to. So it's very fun or interesting experience. Okay, that's it for this first demo. We'll show you more, some advanced things about mobile apps later. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if this one can give you a... Um, yeah, first let me share my original 
slide first. Okay, so I'm not sure if this demo can give you a basic test taste for Freda, but I hope it helps. And actually, the points I want to highlight is it can inject JavaScript into your process, which is written in maybe different languages, maybe in C, C++, Rust, or Golang, uh, maybe other things like Java. So it's amazing, isn't it? And also, we can not only monitor in the course, we can also change the parameters as well as the return values. So we can change the behavior of the course in the target. And actually, Freda can do more things about this. And you can use this to, to invest in some software. You don't have a source code, definitely. That's why we call it reverse engineering. And also, maybe you can develop new features based on some old software you, you cannot modify because you don't have the source code. So I think it can enlarge or maybe enhance the area, I mean, for your imagination. So you name it. So next, I want to show you a real world demo since maybe the Hello World stuff is too simple for you. And I would like to show you a real world demo which will um, provided by Baikang, which is for a real mobile app. So maybe you can know to what extent we can achieve. Okay, Baikang, it's your short time. Hello, welcome to the Freda iOS demo. I'm Bai Kang. I will demo how to use the Freda for some more reversing engineering. And uh, first of all, I will introduce our background of this uh, demo. So our target is a famous open source media player, which called the uh, VLC, and uh, we will download it from Apple Store. And uh, we already downloaded it from the Apple Store. Uh, after that, we were working on a, an iPad Touch device, which is running the jailbreak version of iOS 15. And the reason we jailbreak it is because the radar need using jailbreak form to build in the connection, just like the knowledge we just shared before. And the goal of the demo is we need using the uh, Frida console to control the VLC application on the iOS device. Okay, so let me put the device aside. I think you guys can see the device. Let me choose in the music play, music slide. You can see we have three uh, no copyright songs in ready in this device. Uh, after that, I will start the player screen first. You can see the player screen. Uh, then we will start in queue. Using Freda to control the media player. Now, let's try to check in the connection with the uh, uh, Apple Touch. We can use in the Freda OS devices to check in all the USB device which is connected with the this Frida and the we found one. The USB device is uh, which shows is Apple Touch and currently run, running the iOS uh, 15 here. So uh, we already can connection with the, that iOS device which is already open the VLC. Uh, then we will find in which uh, progress is running that VLC. So we can use in the Frida, Frida PS-U 
Flash to you means uh, using the USB connection to the iOS device. So we can use the Dash U. You can see there have a lot of uh, progress it shows up. So let's start using some grip. Uh, grip for VLC. Then we found one. Uh, the VLC for iOS. Uh, let's just uh, attach that uh, progress. So we can use in the Frida command and using Dash U because we want to connect with a USB device. And using Dash N because we want to connect in some uh, actual uh, progress name. So we can use in Dash N and I will copy the VLC for iOS name here. Uh, then we can start to attach. You can see here. It showed Apple Touch 50 and uh, we'll see for iOS. It means we are successfully attached with that uh, application. Then I clean my screen. In the first, uh, we attach into some application. You can just uh, use in the object dot class to show the all the class which is running in this uh, application. <coughs> oh, see. You can see there is a massive class which uh, already in this uh, application, but we just are looking for something uh, related to the uh, play post service. Uh, maybe uh, uh, I guess it will be a service because uh, some service can control uh, the media player to play or post. That is uh, makes sense, right? And uh, maybe it's also includes some keywords. It's called uh, play because that's uh, related some player or something else. So uh, let's ask get the uh, all the class names first. Object case and uh, object C and the classes. So everything in the free that we you can. Just the uh, communication as a JavaScript. That is pretty easy. Uh, then we got a lot, so we gonna to filter those class names. Um, then I got first class name, and uh, first thing I want to do lower case. Okay, type issue. Okay, yeah, and. Uh, we want to go to everything in the lower case. So CS to lower case. And after that, it should be includes with the with the service. Service and is perhaps also include with the play, right? So let's see. We just go to uh, go to a few services here. We can see the the last one is uh, we'll see playback service. It seems it can work. And we go to another is uh, we'll see playback service adjust filter is uh, seems not work and this things seems is uh, some data layer things some structure uh, we don't care and some dash that uh, since I don't want to touch that absolutely we are not running some couple of cases so we ignore that so. Perhaps the last one is our target, but we can try. Uh, how to try that? Uh, the Frida have some objects C, and which can choose some classes. Uh, we just choose the classes here and uh, naming that classes. <coughs> then we can see the result. Then we just have one instance is currently running. So perhaps that is uh, our target. So we get that target and the code is uh, as an instance. 
So we can check the instance have watch method. Uh, you can see uh, we can see the play and the previous and some playback rate is close to some media concept and some playback time and the playback position and the play pause and the sleep timer. I think this is our target here. So we can just uh, using, I want to try the play pause first. Uh, we just uh, using that instance we just created and uh, we want to call the play pause done. The music is start. You can see in above uh, the post the the running button call come uh, change to the post button and the music is uh, start. So maybe I can call this again because this is a, a play pause method. So maybe it can post the uh, music. No, now the music is paused. I found that. Uh, we just mentioned that have some next. We can try to call them. Okay, it's switch to the next. And the previous. Okay, it starts start to the beginning. And if I call where you can see, it can switch to the previous music. Okay, so. I think we found the target. That's that's the easy for using Frida doing these things. Frida have an API called Interceptor. So we using the Interceptor and attach to some method. We just using the play play post method. So this time we, I want to just uh, in attach with the play post. Method. And then we call the instance here and uh, play pause and implementation. Then the second uh, uh, arguments uh, parameter will be a, ma a method. Uh, we can it's have uh, two hooks in the default. We one is the on enter and another one is on leave. So this time we use the on enter here and put uh, some code here with just the console. So play pause. Let's see what will happen. Uh, I will use my real finger to uh, touch the real machine. You can see the play post is shows up, so it shows up in our my our terminal. So we already hacking in that uh, method. So we change the scenes, and I have another demo, which is for the, how to using this uh, Frida as a developer. So. Uh, we have uh, let me exit. We have a, a, a Python program here, and uh, I just uh, run this Python program. I will ex explain this later. So some server here, and it's in anyway, and it have a lot of API exchange here. Let me show the phone hand. So I've refreshed this initially. So this is a, a website which can control the this uh, Apple Touch machine, and that machine is uh, very awesome. So we can control the. Uh, things and show the every information back to the front end. The front end will call back with the back end. The back end is built by the 
uh, flask, and the, the flask will communication with the Frida. The Frida will communication with that Apple Touch machine. Uh, then the information will go back with the phone hand to the Apple Touch, where the flask uh, as a, a server. Then we can control that Apple Touch machine to play the everything we want, and we can sync the uh, playing status with our users, maybe users. Uh -huh. So that's it. That is the things, and I will show how the communication happens. Uh, the real code is here. So we have some API, uh, which is uh, communicate with uh, Frida as and uh, Flask. Yes, and uh, we just need few codes using the Frida Python binding here, and to get our USB devices and attach with the, this application name. We'll see for iOS as uh, something we do in common line. It's the same thing, and uh, we create some script here. It's uh, writing by the JavaScript, but uh, in directly we are using the same logic to uh, object C and uh, choose a sync. And we found an instance and the code play pause and the previous select play pause uh, method. And we also can get some image uh, like this uh, artwork image. So we can get the image and you get the image data, read the memory to get whole image in, in the binary, in the memories, and they return that image by, as a byte stream to the front end. <laughs> and this is all the free the iOS demo. Okay. Yeah, I hope you enjoy this real world, so called real world demo. First, allow me to share my original. Okay, yeah, I, I hope you enjoy this. Um, we call this a real world because we use a, an application we downloaded from the App Store, but it's an open source one. So yeah, but you, you can get my get our idea that you, you can not only apply all these instructions to open source one, you can apply this to anyone. And also maybe I, I just uh, saw some questions in the Q and A section, but we'll leave this to the end of this. Okay, maybe we can have a summarization or recap. So uh, before that, I, I think maybe there is a question. So what does Freda mean to maybe hackers or security specialists? But I don't think it's a question because Freda it's been there for a very long time, it's years. So it's just, it's not a question. They just use it for a very long time to do all kinds of things related to security or reverse engineering or similar stuff. So I, I think most of them benefit from this. It's a, it's a very wonderful tool. But the most important thing is I think the question should be, what does Freda mean to devs, to us? So I think maybe it's the more important one. So I'll leave this to, to Baikang to give us a heads up or summary for what we see Freda to us. So in the end, uh, the Freda to us uh, as a developer, uh, lower or number of learning to go learn the to commission use script API and the Freda. And you don't need to learn in C and C++ anymore to achieve the safe things to reverse engineering on a mobile phone or some application. And in other things, you can shorter your feedback loop 
now you can just need a second level uh, to verify your ideas. And uh, in the end, you, you also can, uh, before let anything go wrong, but the application is still running and you hacker your hacker process is not uh, well roofing by any type e or error as as what in what happens in my demo okay. and uh, you and for now on you can debug you can extend your debug range you can as a dev we also debug a lot of applications but they the the, the application is waiting by our code is uh, we are running the instance and on our machine and debug it on our machine. But use find use Frida, you can just uh, start the progress. Even the progress is uh, on other machine or uh, while whiteness, you, you can use in some connection to let the Frida communication with that progress and the injection some uh, server to that uh, progress to communication with the uh, your local JavaScript uh, uh, hacking script. And uh, we are familiar that we can automate uh, more and more tasks, and uh, you can use that improving your inf information. Uh, like you can play some music and you can try to control the, some other device uh, without control before. And uh, in the end, also we can uh, can more understand now how data flow in go going history uh, software. Some history software you may be lost uh, or the source code, and uh, but you can using the reversing engineer to uh, help you understand that application. And like instruction can help us doing new functional new functions to all the software. So being now you can save your time to uh, at a historical software, you can just uh, using some hook, we are free that to communication with that. That's all the summary of the Frida. So let's restart the QA time. Okay, thank you, Becca. And also I think that's, uh... That's pretty much for our sharing for Freda itself. Um, yeah, at last I just want to highlight, yeah, it, it's not, this sharing is not a state of the art of Freda, but I, I hope uh, if you are dev, you can enjoy this. Maybe you can, yeah, open a new window for you, open a new door for you. Okay, so uh, let's go to the Q&A section. So I, I repeat the question. So first question is debugger, is the debugger the master server? Um, I'm not sure if I understand this totally correctly, but I guess you mean um, when I draw a debugger and debug it here and I mentioned, um, yeah, I mentioned the communication channel, you want to know which side is server, which side is client, right? So actually the server is in debugging. Maybe it's not the target process, maybe another process in the target operating system, but it, is, it also can be the target process because your server can also be a um, shared object or dynamic module in the target pro process. So yeah, in short, the server should be in debugging, not debugger. Debugger behave as a client. You, you use what can whatever protocol, maybe USB cable, maybe a TCP IP protocol to connect with the server to do things. Yeah, I ho hope you can answer your question. The second one, um, could you share some real world examples or use cases where Freda has been particularly effective in showing security or de development challenges? Um, yeah, I'm not sure if the, the, the demo just now is a real world example for you, but I think the, the last recap, 
can answer some of this. For example, um, yeah, we, I will not name it to this, but I'll give you a, a couple of examples. Um, maybe you have a old software, which is not maintained, has not been maintained for a long time, but you still think some feature is valuable. For example, it's a GUI, it's a GUI app, maybe some running in, in Windows for years, but you won't build a web service for that, like Bicon just demo. We can use this, right? So to first to do some kind of reverse engineering for that, and then expose the feature for some web usage. And also for security, I think uh, there are a huge amount of examples because Freda is invented, was invented for this purpose, for reverse engineering and for dynamic instrumentation. Yeah, please pay attention to the difference between this. First, you try to understand the software. The second one is try to, to enhance or modify the software. So I think they uh, also to, to trace, yeah, to the tracing. Tracing is another purpose for these kind of things. Yeah, I, I'm not sure because um, there, there will be a huge amount, uh, huge list for, for the examples. If you have further question, I, I please ask again. Yeah, I'm not sure if this satisfies you. Have you tried to use GPT AI for writing Prada? This is a nice question for Prada JavaScript. We have not tried, but I think definitely it's it's worth trying because um, you know Freda has been there for a while, and also there are so many code snaps shared in the internet, and uh, yeah, we, we have a website for for the sharing. So I think it's definitely worth trying using GPT to for this purpose. Uh, maybe Copilot is better to try. Okay, so for the next question, is this a tool usable in enterprise software? Mm, I think it, dep it depends. Uh, maybe uh, I'm not sure if I understand this correctly. First, I think you need to make sure you can legally to do uh, reverse engineering or, or dynamic code instrumentation for the target. Yeah, but, but it's out of our, our scope. Um, and also, if you look into Freda, you will find it's not just a script engine. It's a, it's a toolkit, like I mentioned a couple of times. So it contains very low level API and all kinds of infrastructure for reverse engineering and the similar stuff. So definitely you can build your own tool for your, your own scenario or use cases. So definitely I think it can be a tool useful. Also, like Bacon just uh, mentioned, we can largely, I think we can leverage this in our testing framework or infrastructure to test more scenarios or test more cases. Yeah, also test deeper. Yeah, so uh, in, in every aspect, in my understanding, I think it's totally doable and useful. Yeah, I hope, uh, yeah. And also, Bacon, if you think I need something, you can add. Uh, okay, I, I, sorry. Yeah, the last question is, uh, is there anything a dev can do to prevent someone else from reverse engineering your app? I think it's a, it's a good one. Um, so speaking of defeating, um, reverse engineering, I think mm, it's it's very traditional. It's not just for Freda. It's against uh, all kinds of attack we call it reverse engineering. Um, normally reverse engineering consists of two types, uh, which is called um, static reverse engineering and dynamic reverse engineering. For Freda, uh, I prefer to call it dynamic one because we just use debugger, yeah, debugging and debugger to study the target. But there's another one, static one, 
we use something like IDA or Banner Ninja or even um, some other tools you can do analysis for the binary files statically. And basically, I, I don't think there was a, a silver bullet for this kind of a tech. Because if we don't consider the cost, I mean money and the time, everything can be achieved and can be reversed, right? But if we consider that, there are still there are still many kinds of ways to prevent this. For example, we can leverage some kind called of structure, um, of obstructions, and also we can use virtual machines. We can use some kind of um, shell. I, I, I don't know the term. I don't remember the term, but to to add a shell for the software. So for, for each approach I mentioned, we add more complexity and more time cost for the attackers. I think that's the things we can do. So, but if you give the unlimited um, time or, or money as the condition, I don't think there is an effective way to, to prevent this. Also, you know, um, as Windows, we have so many versions of Windows, but as time goes by, if the software is at its end of lifetime, we, we don't have to worry about that. If we have a new version, we can prevent the attack for the new version of our software. As I think we we have one. Yeah, that's the purpose. Okay, yeah, for this one, it's a huge topic. Um, Provide some other two slides, right? Um, to what aspect? Because if you search for reverse engineering or, or um, even dynamic code instrumentation, there are so many results. For example, I just mentioned something, some tools like IDA Pro, which is very expensive. And there is open source one uh, created by, by NSA. I remember it's called um, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I type in the, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, Hydra or something, I, I maybe even a typo, but yeah, sorry, um, static one, dynamic one, also if you want to trace the behavior of an um, application, there are more. For example, um, there is a technology which is very popular recently. It's called eBPF. You can also use that to trace applications, yeah, to monitor applications. Yeah, so yeah, it depends your needs. Sorry, uh, yeah, it's also a huge topic. Yeah, I think uh, that's pretty much for all, but still, uh, please remember, feel free to contact us if you are interested in this and uh, uh, have more questions, but we're happy to to communicate. Okay, I think that's the end of our sharing and hope you enjoy this conference. Yeah, for the rest of stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Holly, and thank you, Vaipandi. It was uh, insightful of the talk. Hope other attendees have enjoyed the talk. Yeah.